to our worldwide audience of paint heads, culture commandos. It's your half ass reporter James Comic on the bike. And it's a Friday afternoon, and we are in Chelsea. Special shout out to our friends in Lockdown London. Oh boy, here we go again. And we're gonna try to run here to the Paula Cooper Gallery. And I'm gonna try to get some pictures of the Cecily Brown exhibition. Okay, well, we'll uh, make our cursory scan over the installation. Uh, well, I remember this gallery from years ago, uh, Robert Miller uh, had a gallery here for many years. I saw many wonderful shows. And uh, gosh, I don't know how long Paula Cooper's been here, but uh, she's certainly uh, distinguished enough to hold down a space like this here on 26th Street. Well, we have uh, sanitized our hands and signed the contact information sheet. So now we can start looking at the paintings. This is Red and Dead 2020, Oil on London, 53 by 67 inches. Well, I uh, have bumped into some of Cecily's work, maybe one or two pieces, but I haven't seen a uh, major show before. But I know that she's very popular, uh, very glamorous, and I was reading some of her backstory. Okay, well, uh, This is titled Lobsters, Oysters, Cherries, and Pearls 2020. Well, I haven't had time to read the press release, but just from our uh, scan over the installation, it looks like uh, Cecily is riffing on a lot of uh, Northern Baroque still life paintings. And, uh, well, that's interesting. I actually did a, uh, a report. We captured some footage of a little show that Cecily did at the uh, Macaron gallery. So this was probably about uh, oh, two or three years ago. I think I uh, titled the, uh, the piece something like Brown on Brown because it was actually in the front gallery there was a f wonderful Chicago Imagist artist named Roger Brown. Okay, this piece is titled Demon Menagerie, 2019-2020. This is a big painting. This is 106 by 106 inch square. So that's like nine feet on a side. Anyway, uh, and uh, Cecily's part of the show was, I think a bunch of small paintings uh, dealing with some poem about a garden, as I remember. Maybe I'll paste in a link below, if I remember. Okay. Uh, 
I kind of uh, like this. One of the things I was noticing is that uh, you know, Cecily is uh, using a lot of very thin down paint. So we had Roger Brown, Cecily Brown, and then the gallery was just down the street from Gavin Brown. So, uh, yeah, we were browning it all the way. We were having a brown out that day. This is titled, All I Want is a Room with a View. This is 37 by 53. While I was talking about uh, some of the research I've been doing on Cecily, and, uh, well, she's got a great backstory. Okay, I'm getting kind of some readings of some figures here, but uh, again, this is kind of a theme that's playing out through several paintings, the bowl of cherries. for the birds. Three panels overall, 29 by 141. Like two and a half by 12 feet, something like that. And uh, again, here's our uh, kind of a section of still life. Well, there were a whole group of Dutch painters that uh, did a lot of still lives with dead rabbits and uh, geese, doves, fowl. And, uh, well, I'm sure this will all come <coughs> become extremely clear when I read the press release about uh, her intermingling the the figures, the female figures with the, the still lives. Probably some anxious relationship between the the domestic tranquility and uh, sexual desire of some kind. It's always a good theme. Noon burned gold. So this one is more of a you could consider a classic nude. And, uh, well, Cecily does a lot of pretty large paintings, but uh, so this one is 31 by 37. I would say that's right around the kind of standard easel size painting. And she does a great job with this. So I like the way that she's kind of uh, divided the picture plane with this little vertical and the two figures on one side. I actually think this is kind of a, an interesting challenge these uh, long multi-panel pieces. So this is titled, Of Nothing, Something Still, 2019-2020. 
oil and UV curable pigment on linen, five panels, 43 by 235 inches. So that's, that's a long painting. Well, I was talking about Cecily's backstory and uh, well, the part I like about it is that Cecily was a young painter, I think, living in London, uh, had studied, I think she maybe studied at Slade School, and uh, her mother was a poet, and uh, well, there was one of her mother's friends, a gentleman named David Sylvester, who was a uh, pretty well-known art critic, and uh, just through my kind of amateurish studies of the, the New York art scene, I've come across photographs of him at openings with people like Mark Rothko and William de Kooning, and he's yakking with various people. I think even uh, Louise Bourgeois might be in one of the photos. Anyway, uh, well, I guess when Cecily was about 20 or 21, uh, it came out, I guess David told her that uh, he was her father, and uh, well, she, she didn't know that up to that point. And uh, well, you're a 21 or 22 year old art student, and suddenly you're hanging out with David Sylvester, uh, probably be the equivalent of somebody growing up in the 50s and having Clement Greenberg as a father. Anyway, uh, well, David was a champion of and a very good friend, and very good friends with Francis Bacon. Okay, so we've got some of her figures kind of floating through here. Uh, and, uh, well, anyway, she said that she got a chance to get to know Francis Bacon, became friendly with him, although I guess he was kind of a uh, cantankerous <laughs> character. But, uh, yeah, how many 23, 24 year old people do you know that can go and spend time hanging out with Francis Bacon? Okay, they're calling this side room east. Titled Selfie, 2020 oil and linen, 43 by 47. So Cecily is going to school in London, said that she was maybe a waitress, but uh, was not really feeling like she was part of the scene. This was the, this was the days when the, uh, the young British artists and uh, people like Damien Hirst were ruling the roost. And Cecily decided that uh, she was a painter and that uh, she was never gonna get the kind of traction or the support of a little painting community that she would get in New York, so she came to New York. And uh, boy, she just, uh, she, and it skyrocketed to recognition. I guess Jeffrey Deitch might have been one of the first people to give her show. And uh, when you're 27, 28, 29, and that all happens, uh, you're off to a pretty good start on a career. And again, I kind of like the, uh, the pieces that are a little less shredded up, a little less Confettied. Uh, picture this 2020 oil and linen 47 by 43. Okay, I like her little uh, margin that she's painted in on the bottom edge. Anyway, so Cecily comes to New York and is 
kind of picked up by some very good galleries very early on. And she talked about uh, some of her influences. Okay, so we got a, looks like a little kind of a figure there. Maybe a, uh, A couple of nudes in a kitchen, standing around the uh, breakfast table. So, uh, Francis Bacon was one of her influences, and she also says that uh, William de Kooning was uh, an influence. This is up the neck, oil and linen, 43 by 47. Well, as I said, I haven't seen a lot of Cecily's work, but I know that one of the uh, features that was always pointed out was the fact that a lot of it had uh, some very explicit sexual content, I guess. Uh, however, when you're painting like this and everything is so uh, fragmented, a lot of that meaning is kind of ambiguous. And uh, so it's it's like a uh, Rorschach test, uh, you know, you, uh, what the person sees to, and what they're telling you they see tells you more about them than it does about what they're looking at. Although I have to say there's a, uh, there's a kind of a Rococo quality about some of this. Kind of uh, shattered, fragmented Rococo. Let's go in the big gallery. When this kiss is over, 2020, 89 by 83 inches. Well, wow, that's, that's a big painting. And I think I, I kind of prefer some of these large pieces because the, uh, the gestures and the brush strokes are a little less cramped. Uh, you know, she gets a chance to paint with the whole body, her whole arm is swinging, rather than just doing the wrist and the elbow. Oh, there are our cherries again. And as I was saying, I think that uh, well, she's painting fairly thinly, and uh, it's kind of a trend these days. We went and saw an Amy Silman show a couple of weeks ago, and she had thinned down a lot of her paint and was using vinyl paint and some other things. And uh, in the last four or five years that uh, Dana Schutz is uh, Kind of thinned down a lot of her paint, but in Dana's case, I think that uh, a lot of that was so that she could contrast her big juicy slathers of paint against the uh, the drier, flatter, matter washes and uh, thin, transparent layers. Stranded 2020, 73 by 83. Well, okay, I like this because this is one of the few pieces that isn't keyed to 
red totally. Uh, I kind of like the, the dark background. It almost gives it kind of a nocturnal sense. Uh, okay, what are we looking at here? Well, it looks like we got a couple of figures. I guess it would be interesting to see if she's um, riffing on some classic Rubens, uh, Manet, Renoir. Oh, it's kind of a face in there. And a hand. Well, I guess if I spent enough time in here, I'd start to see the various layers of figurative pictures and gosh I guess in that way it kind of relates to uh, some of Neo Rausch's work although Neo is not this abstract but he's got a lot of vanishing points perspectival vanishing points that kind of fight against each other size painting so this is titled the splendid table three panels overall 105 and a half by 316 inches so gosh that's something like uh, 30 feet across, something like that. Uh, well, as I was saying, I thought that some of these paintings she was riffing on the classic uh, Northern Baroque and maybe particularly the Dutch still life painters from the 16th century. So I think uh, this is 2019 to 2020. This is a little uh, more diverse colorystically. And uh, yeah, she's got some uh, nice violets in there. We can kind of see some figures. It looks like there's a deer that's sort of hanging down there and uh, tables with other things that are piled up. Well, I used to go to the Met with my uh, instructor, Knox Martin, and uh, well, Knox was a pretty serious student of art history and he would show us paintings by people like Franz Halls and point out some of the images that were actually uh, kind of iconography for various things, virginity, fidelity, uh, <laughs> cheapness, uh, other kinds of things. Okay, so we got our little got cat eyes in there. And, uh, well, Knox would tell us that, uh, gosh, you gotta sit in front of one of these paintings for about 20 minutes or a half an hour just to start to get a, an idea of what you're looking at. Uh, we don't have that much time. As a matter of fact, it's getting up towards closing time now. And again, we've got a lot more of the uh, kind of pure colors. 
And, uh, yeah. I like those, uh, ultra blues. Oh no, it looks like maybe some sap green. Again, it kind of, and in this way, it does relate to uh, Francis Bacon and some of his flailed figures. But uh, it's kind of interesting that uh, Cecily does always kind of keep a, uh, well, maybe I can't call it a uh, feminine view, but just a uh, Rococo view of uh, the figure and uh, the sensibility of how she handles her paint. some oysters in there somewhere. James Calm reporting on Brown here at Paula Cooper on West 26th Street. You can like this, share, subscribe, recommend it to your friends, post it to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. And as always, we just ask you to say thank you, Kate. Thank you.